Dennis of Venice Legacy Partners. Welcome to the Exit Readiness Podcast. I'm here with my co-host Walter Dial, CPA and tax partner at GRF CPAs and Advisors in Bethesda, Maryland. Our mission here on the uh, Exit Readiness Podcast is to provide you, the business owner, with subject matter expertise on topics pertaining to building sellable or transferable business value and for planning your eventual exit from the business. We want to help you build a business that's sellable and then exit successfully on your own terms and conditions. Walter, what comes to mind as a hurdle that we often see uh, an owner having to overcome or face and planning for their eventual and for a successful exit? I can think of a few things off the top of my head, Pat. For instance, you know, from a personal standpoint, the business owner has to be ready to transition from, you know, going to the office every day and making high level decisions to, you know, maybe facing a life that they perceive as having less significance and impact, you know, because they're no longer going to be involved in the business. Um, from a transaction standpoint, I think if it's a sale to insiders, they got to get over the hurdle of, you know, some uncertainty as to whether their team is going to be able to continue the business the way they have. And, at the bottom line, continue to make payments to buy the business. Um, and if it's a sale to a third party, I think, you know, they got to be comfortable that the culture that they've built over long years of owning the company is going to remain intact. So I think there's a lot of hurdles and they're, you know, they're personal in nature to the owner. Yeah, not a, not a few hurdles to overcome and, and all are fairly significant. And in today's episode, we're going to uh, take a look at some of the key hurdles, three really, that an owner faces when they are planning for their, their exit. Today's topic is transition, transaction, trepidation, the three hurdles in every successful exit. And our guest is a friend and consultant. He's been consulting for a long time, been advising business owners and CEOs for years. John Raster is CEO and president of Intersource, which he founded in 1990. Uh, John's been both a business owner and a CEO, and he has a unique perspective on the effect of the personal ownership issues and concerns that, um, that drive business management and ownership issues. Uh, he's now an advisor to leaders of private companies, family businesses, and nonprofit organizations. He's a founding partner of the Greater Washington, D.C. Family Business Alliance, a member of the Association for Corporate Growth, the Neuro Leadership Institute, the Society of in International Business Fellows and the Exit Planning Exchange. And the one that I'm probably most impressed with is Minsa. <laughs> I tried to get into Minsa. They wouldn't let me in, John. Yeah, well, I can, take my I can take my membership card to any city in America. And with that and $5, I can get a cup of coffee. So, Well, it's good to see you. Yeah, you know what? Um, my business partner, partner Corby McGordon, is uh, also a member of Mensa, which he very strategically brings up every now and again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Corby and I already figured that out between the two of us. So, good company. Well, hey, it's great to have you with us today. We're looking forward to uh, this discussion in the three, really these three, these three hurdles uh, that you're going to focus in on today. There's not a few, as you know, there's a lot of hurdles to face, but these three that you're going to talk about here today are very significant with some tremendous ramification consequences and rewards if, if all planned for effectively. So we're excited about it. And I think Walter Scott is going to kick us off with the first question here. Good morning, John. So you know, the three hurdles that you identify, transition, the transaction, and any trepidation an owner might have, you know, are very, very significant. Can we start off just with you describing each of the three? Sure. Um, good to see you, Walter, Pat. Um, always uh, nice to be connected and doing things with you guys. So 
uh, owning a business is like an airplane ride. The two riskiest parts are the very beginning and the very end. And at the end, you know, that end game of a business life cycle, everything is different. The adversaries are different, the risk, the priorities, the time horizon, and people don't understand the complexity at the end of that, um, end of that time period. Um, so if you talk to a typical business owner who's far away from an exit before they're really kind of sinking their teeth into it, and you say, what are you going to do at the end? The response is usually something along the lines of, oh, I'm going to sell the company. Okay, uh, that's fine. Um, and they and they and most people, frankly, think of the end of the business as just a sale, except it's not just a sale. Selling a business is not anything like selling a house. You know, with a house, you've got comps. There's identical houses up and down the street. Uh, there's no strategic buyers for your house. Uh, the people move out with the house. You know, you don't have to worry about people staying behind and continuing to do things. Uh, so a, a business transaction is much, much more difficult. Um, so a transaction, we talk about the transaction, it's very mechanical. It's the nuts and bolts. There's a process to go to market. There's legal documents. There's reps and warranties. There's all those nitty gritty things that your lawyers will tell you about. Um, and, uh, and a transaction is fairly well contained. You can identify the process, you can execute it, you can march through all the details and you can get it done. Um, Pat, you made a good point about there's a lot of opportunity um, in this end phase. There's a huge amount of untapped opportunity that people don't realize. We'll get to some of that a little bit later. Um, one of the risks of a transaction is if you say, well, I'm just gonna sell my company, 80% of businesses that are listed for sale don't sell. So right off the bat, if that's your kind of knee jerk, um, you know, first cut reaction to what I'm gonna do at the end, already, you know, the odds of you succeeding are pretty small. So a transaction is fairly self-contained, mostly mechanical, lots of details that go into that. Transition, uh, is much more complex because here we're getting into um, Walter, you were talking about, you know, the changing role of that CEO owner. Um, you know, you're going to the office every day, you're actively involved in the business, and now you're going to switch. So partly that's personal. We'll get into that later. Partly it's business. Uh, you know, how do you work with the team? How do you make the transition? How does the company survive without you? Things like that. Um, so you're setting up uh, the company for success under new ownership. You've got to communicate with all the stakeholders. You can't just sell and then, you know, tell the bank and the landlord, oh, by the way, I'm no longer the owner. It's just not quite that simple. Um, and because of the, the complexity and dynamic nature of that transition, um, there is a, a tremendous variation in the value that you could realize um, in the transaction. So a transition is business operational. It's personal to a certain extent. Um, there's a lot that goes in there, the moving parts, the things that make a business complex. So that's transition. Uh, now we talk about trepidation. And I got to tell you, um, most people who are not in business don't realize how personal business is. Um, for a lot of people, you know, th their identity is tied up in the business. It's their biggest asset. It's their legacy. It's their children's inheritance. It's their retirement plan. It's all of that. There's a lot at stake. And uh, I have had business owners talk to me, I remember thinking of one guy in particular, and he said when he got to the point of just starting to think about planning for the exit, so not getting into anything yet, just starting to think about planning for the exit, he said it was terrifying. And that's his word, and he was not exaggerating. And that's not atypical, um, because you've been doing something for 10, 20 years. You've got relationships with your employees, your customers, your vendors, your you know, professional colleagues. Um, you know, so a lot of that makes it very difficult. Um, you add on to that, um, like I said, there's a lot at stake, and uncertainty. Uncertainty, just the way human brains work, uncertainty drives people insane. Uh, so if you don't know what to expect, and of course, running a business is different than trying to do the exit, because now you've got to manage this old process that you've never done before, uh, you know, set things up and, you know, change the business and, you know, start the transaction and hire the right professionals and so on and so forth. Um, you go through all that and just knowing that you don't know, and of course, being the person who's always been in charge and been driving the bus and having the answers, that's very difficult. Um, and so one of the things, if I zoom out a little bit, is just for people, just for business owners who are 
starting the process of thinking or getting into the exit just to realize that there are these sort of three parallel hurdles um, you know, don't think just about a transaction, think about the transition and understand that you personally are going to have a little uncertainty. Uh, people, you know, have various degrees of the trepidation or the terror or the, you know, fill in the blank, whatever kind of emotion. There's a gigantic emotional component that needs to be at least acknowledged. Um, some people need extra work on it, not everyone. Uh, it's a big factor that is often missed in professionals like attorneys and accountants and so forth who are just you know nuts and bolts and i'll do my thing and you know lose sleep on your own time so i hope that kind of clears up the the big picture on these three things yeah so john that it does well done thank you for that and um so we like to try to provide some practical help and advice uh in the few minutes that we have on this podcast for whoever's listening. And so why don't we do this? Let's go back through as a great overview of each one of the hurdles. Let's go back through each one of them and then maybe, you know, give a few bullet points, few action items maybe as to how an owner might plan for each one. Uh, we'll start maybe with the transaction, then move to transition and trepidation in the same order you just went in and just, uh, maybe hit on some things uh, that might help a listening owner in planning for each one of those. That sound good? Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to do this from a slightly different direction. Um, so those three hurdles, the transaction, transition, trepidation, are, if you will, sort of longitudinal. You know, you're, you're going down those three paths um, from beginning to end. Um, cutting across sideways, if you will, uh, are three things that uh, need to be ready for a successful exit. And that's the owner needs to be ready, the company needs to be ready, and the market needs to be ready. So let me go through those. And then it's an easy way to uh, kind of slice and dice those things and put uh, the various things into little buckets. Um, and it's also, and one of the reasons I have this construct, the owner company market, is because that's how people think. Um, I've been doing this for a lot of years and I listen to a lot and I read a lot. Um, and, you know, you've already heard me reference, you know, how brains work. You know, there's a, there's a way that people process information and make decisions. Uh, and so bringing some of that in uh, has given me uh, this other perspective. Uh, so if you don't mind, I'm going to do owner company market and we'll cross hatch that with the transaction transition trepidation. That's okay. Yeah, terrific. Yeah, okay. great. So. Three things, like I said, three things need to be ready for any successful exit. The owner needs to be ready, um, and that's the owner inside the company and the owner outside the company, and I'll talk about those. The company needs to be ready, um, so that's operations, people, systems, and so forth. Um, and also, there's an aspect about the company being ready, which is while a company is running, mostly owners are not thinking about company value. They're thinking about revenue and income and profitability and growth and things like that. So company. And then market. The market needs to be ready. Well, market timing, there's not really a lot you can do about that. And there's also your readiness to go to market. So each of these breaks down into a couple. So I'm gonna take the owner outside the company first. Now, I don't do any work here. I need to understand what's going on with the owner personally outside the company because those personal things drive business decisions. So outside the company, it's things like the personal financial plan, personal tax planning, an estate plan, uh, life after business plan. You know, lots of people have been running a business and they'll say, well, when I retire, I'll do a bunch of stuff. And you know, they haven't really thought about it. and uh, you know, don't have a good idea of what life after business looks like, which, by the way, is one of those things that drives trepidation when you are supposedly leaving something, but then the next thing is just a big black hole. Uh, okay, so that's the owner outside the company. Now, the owner inside the company is, again, we're back to the changing role. Um, and you know, 50 episodes ago, or, you know, however many it's been, I was on this show talking about that changing role. So you might want to go listen to that episode number five. Um, so the owner inside the company, the, the changing role, how they manage the team, so on and so forth. Um, and I'll give you another scary statistic. Um, if an owner is too involved in the daily operations of the company and they go to sell, the price will be reduced up to 20%. So the cost of keeping your job through a transaction when you want to sell the company to someone else, if you're too involved, could cost you, depending on the size of your business, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars by not 
attending to your changing role as a business owner in the transition period before you get to a transaction. Okay, so that's the owner outside the company, inside the company. Now, if we talk about the company, um, so let's talk about the value piece first. Uh, like I said, lots of business owners, day to day, week to week, month to month, year to year, they're running their company, you know, five, 10, 20 years. And on a daily basis, they're looking at financials that are sort of current operational income, revenue, cash flow, profitability, things like that, appropriately and managing to that. Um, and oftentimes not looking at the bigger picture of what is X, Y, and Z that I'm doing or deciding or planning, how is that affecting the value of my company? Um, and that's a whole topic we could get into. We don't have time for that. Um, but so a couple of things, um, as a for instance, that tap into that are, at, you know, so there, there's five components of value. Part of the first one is uh, assets. One of the things that lots of companies don't do very well is identify intellectual property that they have and capitalize on it. Uh, so, so that's one thing that if it hasn't been done already, absolutely needs to be done during a transition period. Uh, focusing and streamlining, you know, who are your best customers? What are your best products? How, you know, how can you do that? Um, you know, there may be reasons why you're spread a little wide as you get towards the end and you're trying to really hone things in. Uh, that sort of focusing and streamlining, um, obviously good for uh, ongoing business, you know, revenue, profitability, growth, et cetera, and also contributes to um, enterprise value. So there's the value component. We can dig into that a little bit more. Um, operations is where most of the work, especially in the transition phase, comes in. And that's your people, your culture, your systems, your finances, strategy, plans, so on and so forth. Um, because there, it's the nuts and bolts of how you're working. It's, it ties lots of things together. So it gets into the IP that I just mentioned. It's integral in, in the changing role of the owner to be able to work with those people and systems and so forth because setting those up properly are going to enable the owner to step out and then therefore reap the extra value by not being critical to the operations of the business. Uh, a clear picture of you know, what the company is, where the company is going. You need that story to tell buyers um, you know, an ideal situation for a buyer is they have a company that can run without the owner uh, that is clearly and obviously uh, operating well and growing at a decent pace. Perfect situation if you're a buyer. So the closer we can get to that kind of ideal, um, then the better off we are, again, going into that um, transaction. So inside the company, it's, again, it's the value, it's the operations, it's all the things that we're doing to make that company as efficient and profitable and robust as we can. So now let's talk about the market. So um, if we talk about our readiness to go to market, that's when we get into things that really kind of don't apply in you know regular business day to day and have to be done absolutely have to be done when you're getting towards a transaction so things like what's your go-to-market strategy for taking your company out to the market um who, who's on the team for that getting ready for due diligence due diligence is excruciating um and it's 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 one place where the price only goes down uh because the point of due diligence from the buyer's perspective is, of course, to find everything's wrong with the company because, you know, it's a risk for them and they can reduce the price by saying, well, you don't have this, you don't have that, that's a mess, thus and such. And so um, getting ready for due diligence, huge amount of work. Um, auditing and or recasting financials, uh, you know, should you be doing that on an ongoing basis? Yeah, maybe is, a, you know, in the grand scheme of things with so much to do, is that, you know, necessarily as high a priority? Not necessarily. Uh, corporate docs, uh, you know, get your house in order, all the paperwork and things like that. That's a lot of um, nitty gritty blocking and tackling that just needs to be done to have the company ready to go to market. Going back to the imperfect house sale uh, analogy, it's like, you know, cleaning and staging and painting and landscaping, things like that. You just, you know, got to have it done. It's actually more critical than that, but it's, you know, sort of in that realm. You don't do it until you're actually ready to go to market. Now, market timing. Let's talk about that because, of course, you can't time the market. Um, here we are in the middle of the great pandemic of 2020. 
And if you had a plan, you know, say end of last year, you said, okay, 2020, I'm going to sell my company. Uh, we're getting things ready. Maybe, you know, mid year 2020, we'll go out to market. Well, now where are we? Um, you know, in times of uh, high stress and uncertainty in the financial markets, the only deals that get done are the very best or the very worst. Uh, so if you're in the middle, your plans now have gigantic monkey wrench thrown in them. And so what do you do? So to a certain extent, you, well, no, not to a certain extent, you cannot time the market. Um, the question is, how can you be ready for when the market is ready? And that, um, is something that uh, is, again, Pat, back to one of your earlier points, that's one of the huge opportunities in this whole discussion. Um, you know, if you uh, build your company so you can sell it tomorrow, you can also sell it later, or you can also sell it never. Um, and giving yourself those options gives you actually lots of extra value in various ways that we can get into. So now if we, if we take this transaction transition trepidation, uh, you know, sort of, uh, warp versus the weft of the owner company and market. Um, and I've ranted for a while, so I'm going to let you guys, you know, ask some questions. So we can focus this a little bit. Um, you know, we crossed that with the, the owner being ready, the company being ready and the market being ready. Uh, now we have some bite-sized pieces where we can uh, start looking at every aspect of the owner and the company, what we have to do, start to prioritize and let's get down to some nitty gritty. I'm like you, I'm very utilitarian, let's make things work. Uh, who needs to do what by when so we actually get the success that we're looking for. So John, let me ask you, you know, our, our business owners are experts in running their business. They're certainly not experts in the areas you've been discussing, you know, with things to do with uh, exiting their business. So how, where do they get the resources? Um, do you see it as a, as a team of people they need to assemble or can someone like yourself, you know, walk, help them through the process or how do you, how do you do it? Uh, yes, all good points. Um, and you're absolutely right. The, the fact is this process at the, at the end of a, of a business life cycle is totally different. Like I said at the beginning, and they are not experts. Um, so how do we do that? So there's a couple of things. First of all, uh, the way I've broken this down, someone could sit there, um, and, I, and this is exactly how I work. I mean, if someone, a business owner hires me, we go through these exact questions. Uh, we go through these categories, again, because that's how people think and it's easy to understand. Uh, so someone listening to this right now could take this checklist and start thinking about, and now that we have nice small pieces, it's easy to say, oh, okay, let me look at myself here, myself there, let me look at the company, so on and so forth. So some kind of construct, some kind of framework, some kind of process to at least understand that there are all these pieces other than one simple thing that says sell the company. Uh, so understand that there's a lot to go into it and what those pieces are. So that's thing one, obviously you need a process. Um, and yes, there's definitely a team that's required. I can't do all of this. I know exactly what I do. I know exactly what I don't do. Most of this I don't do. I don't do any of the personal owner outside stuff, you know, financial planning, tax, estate. I don't do any of that. Um, I don't do, you know, if someone needs special attention for their trepidation, that is not my specialty. Um, you know, I work mostly in the, um, the owner's role inside the company and the company through the transition. I don't do the transaction. I'm not taking companies to market. So all these things that I'm saying that I don't do, other team members are necessary. So for instance, an owner typically has a corporate attorney. That corporate attorney probably is not an expert in M&A. So you need an M&A specialist. You need someone to take the company to market, an investment bank or business broker, you know, whatever's appropriate given the size and type of your company. You need that kind of person. Um, I am no longer surprised because it's happened so much, but there are a, a large number of owners who get to a point where they've got millions of dollars in value in their company, um, minor children, no estate plan, no financial plan, no nothing. 
Uh, so that clearly needs to be done because again, if we go back to what are the value potentials, there's a lot, if you have the, the, the estate plan constructed properly, you've got a lot more flexibility in your transaction because of things you can do with taxes and getting money out of your estate and a bunch of things that I know some buzzwords and don't know how to do, but I know who to call. Um, so, so these are just some of, ex of the examples of the people that you need. Yes, it takes a team. Yes, it's more work and costs more. Um, and on average, they all pay for themselves multiple times over because if you can, you know, save a few uh, percentage points here, you can do a little bit this with your taxes, you can understand how the deals work and know how to structure and it's not all about price, it's about terms and so on and so forth. And you'll end up with a much better outcome um, uh, at the very end. So, um, so, so definitely the two most critical things are a process uh, to do that and a team of people. Um, where I fit in is there are certain things that I do particularly at a granular, granular level and I can also manage the whole entire process. I don't have to be the one. There should be someone who manages the entire process. Um, I can do it because as a CEO advisor, I'm one-on-one -on -one with the business owner CEO. I see everything. I've been through this a lot before. Uh, so I'm a natural person to be that sort of quarterback, so to speak. Um, uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking of an anecdote where, you know, I had a business owner in a conference room, uh, someone else was running this meeting and, you know, he, he was blue collar guy with a great company, you know, 40 million revenue. And uh, you've seen his trucks all over the road. And he says, I'm surrounded in nine guys in suits and I don't know how to manage this crowd, you know, and I'm supposed to be in charge. Um, so that, that was, and then that's not atypical. Uh, a lot of times the owner, uh, because everyone is focused on the transaction because it's easy to identify and it's very specific. Um, a lot of people, uh, including other professionals, kind of forget the transition and trepidation and the owner gets lost in the shuffle uh, sometimes. I've seen that happen. You know, we'll be doing something. The owner pulls me out of the room and says, well, what about me? You know, all these bankers want to get this deal done, but what about me? Um, so I know I, I went a little bit broad there, but uh, to answer your question, yeah, process, yes, team, um, and some ancillary help sometimes. You just need extra hands to do some of the, uh, the work at the very end. Yeah, that's the same way Pat and I have been operating. Definitely makes sense. Yeah, it absolutely makes sense. And, and Joan, you've done a really good job of giving an overview of, of these three hurdles and uh, planning considerations as well as potential consequences and, and ramifications as well as the opportunities. Uh, yeah, and um, you know, one of the, the key, key messages that we have communicated from the very beginning on this, this podcast is that um, a few of the essential ingredients, uh, you will, if, if you will, of a, a successful exit would include having the right team in place and experienced team, not just a team of advisors, but a team of advisors who actually are experienced in this, this kind of work. And to get started as soon as possible. Uh, that's a dead horse that we continue to beat that's probably that's still twitching a little bit. Uh, and so maybe here, uh, give us any final thoughts that you have today. And then maybe uh, say anything that you would to, to beat that dead horse. <laughs> Yeah, you, it's you still and I are in regard to the time piece. Yeah, you and I are in the same dead horse. Um, one of the things, one of the things that I, I I've been on the soapbox for years. Um, if you build your, like I said before, if you build your company to sell tomorrow, it will also last forever because the basic business principles of the things that you do in terms of building the management team, um, having people constantly learning and moving up in their capabilities, having systems and processes that are scalable, understanding the IP that you have and how you can deploy that and capitalize on that and use it profitably and so forth. All of these kinds of things um, both help you with a successful transaction. They make your transition much easier because things are kind of running on autopilot. And then, you know, exit stage left, the owner goes out and things keep moving apace and, you know, everything's fine. Um, and it just, it, it, it gives you uh, better 
better results now. So anything that you want to count, you know, revenue growth, profitability, um, free time for the owner, you know, you do these things now and you have that. That then leads into more value, an easier transaction if and when you can, I think I heard uh, one of you say, you know, exiting on your terms. Um, when, the, when you're holding the company and you could sell anytime, then you have all the control in the world. Um, I've got a client who we took two years to do all of this stuff. Um, IP based service delivery, management team, systems and processes, everything. And the owner could have sold for millions of dollars. I'm drawing a blank on the time, 12 years ago, 13 years ago. And she still owns the company and it's been paying her and it's been growing. And you know, so what's not to like about that. Um, so, so it's one thing I can't stress enough. You know, a lot of people, when you start talking about exit stuff, uh, they'll say, well, I'm not ready for that. Well, actually, if you start doing these kinds of things now, you're going to end up, uh, end up in a better place now. Uh, and then that is, is just, you know, a few simple things at the end when you do want to do a transaction. So I'm with you on the dead horse. Let's jump up and down on that thing. Um, you know, building building that stuff now gives you optionality later, and every economist will tell you options have value. Uh, so, so there's one. So, so that's one thing. Um, the um, yet another point that I'm now blanking on. Um, uh, it'll come back to me or not. Uh, you know, so so I guess I would just emphasize that uh, that that is is one of those things. And by the way, from where I sit, um, over the years, lots of my business has been with people who say, I want to take my company to the next level, quote unquote, they, they use that phrase, which is always different than it's time to get out. Um, work end, ends up tending to be the same, you know, same kind of thing back to those basic business principles. So, so there would be that. So, it, you know, final thoughts, you know, to, to leave with people. Um, Think through these things. Uh, understand that there's the three transaction transition trepidation avenues you're going to face. They're all going to be sort of interwoven, lots of moving pieces within there. Uh, look at yourself, look at your company, look at the market, uh, understand and start checking through each of those little things um, because you can, like I said, get those into bite sized pieces. Um, know that there are big risks and big opportunities. So 80% of companies don't sell. Uh, you may lose 20% of the value if you're still too important in the business. Um, you know, there were five components of value and we could, we didn't talk about those. We could optimize each of those three are internal, two are external. Um, uh, I can give you three questions to sort out the eight exit options and you can get through that process in pretty short order. Um, so, so there's a lot of, so when you break it down like this, there's a lot of specific things, um, that then make it easier for anyone to get started, uh, going through the decisions, the tasks, um, getting the right people, putting things on a schedule, just getting a grip on this whole process. So there's that final things I'll say is if you're a business owner, there's three things you need to know. Exiting a, a company is nothing at all like running a company. Two different animals. You have one chance to get it right, and I can help. So, John, if someone wanted to talk to you, how can they get in touch? So, easiest uh, email or telephone. So, email john, J O H N, at intersource.net or give me a call, 703 579 6800, extension 800. <clears throat> And if you're driving and you can't write this down, when you get back, just go back to the podcast site and email Pat and he'll put us in touch. Thanks, John. This has been fantastic. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Good to talk to you guys. Yeah, always great to talk to you. And listeners, if you want help in maximizing the value of your business or planning for your eventual exit, you can reach Pat at 301-859-0860. You can reach me at 301-951-9090. You can also access resources at exitreadiness.com, grfcpa.com, and nslp.com. As always, thanks for listening. And until next time on the Exit Readiness Podcast, this is Walter Dial and Pat Ennis signing off.